is to blame for lost jobs? Europe? National economic decision makers? Volkswagen workers in Belgium were sent reeling last month when they learned they wouldn't be making golfs anymore. Production was being moved back to Germany, sucking away 4,000 jobs and sowing doubts about others. Ten years after a Renault plant here was similarly pitched into dismay, the bitterness and the confusion are the same. No one can say this company is going badly. It's a multinational that's making thousands in profits. We wait and wait. We don't know anything. There's no news. We wait. Everybody here expects these meetings to come up with a solution. There's no other choice. Seen from Brussels, the VW affair looks like a new social drama in a long line of social dramas, and the list keeps getting longer. The added worry here is the context of what the German government called national preference. The plant's productivity and work quality were not the cause of the decision, and so the protesters were angry to be told it was a global strategy at work. What's happened to Europe, they wanted to know. Before in Belgium we had steak and chips and salad with pepper and salt. Now there's only the salad, the pepper and salt. Pretty soon they'll take that away. We'll only have the spices. We won't have anything left here in Belgium, thanks to Europe. We don't want this Europe. We, the Belgians who created Europe with the Benelux, it's not at all in this direction. Belgian and European authorities are present, announcing their wish to negotiate keeping a certain volume of work at the Brussels plant. In this Euro deputy's opinion, in moving towards greater integration, Europe has lost its way bit by bit. This event will without a doubt change how the forces relate to each other. But I hope we're not going to wait for dramas like this one every time in order to move forward. The way the institutions work together, Parliament, Council, Commission, remain complex and laborious. Europe's citizens are not going to believe in the European project as long as things like this can happen in Europe with such brutality and little regard for the people who work here. Many lament that 18 months after the French and Dutch rejections of the draft constitution for the EU, the Union is in a sorry state. There is little spark in growth. The continent has 20 million unemployed. Even the politicians have lost faith in the institutions, claims the leader of the parliament's united left group. Europe's leaders have lost the sense of reality as we're about to have the umpteenth debate on the future of Europe. We're going to talk about treaty and constitution and about institutions, but I'm going to tell them, listen to what people are saying. After what's happened here at Volkswagen and after a lot of other dramas, the people will say, if Europe doesn't have the means to protect us from this, then we don't see how we're concerned with Europe. If the leaders understand understand that, then they'll have what they need. It's not just a Belgian thing, it's Belgian, German, Spanish, Portuguese, French, British, everywhere you go, including the countries in the east of Europe. What's known in institutional circles as European construction has always advanced like this, with crisis and relaunch taking turns. The Parliament recently invited Irish Prime Minister Bertie Ahern to a debate on the future of Europe. With 10 years' experience in the council under his belt, the Taoiseach said the EU today is in as much a communication crisis as a constitutional crisis. Nobody can predict with any certainty what the future holds for the constitutional treaty. Uh, there is, of course, no easy answer. But we are not here at either European or national level to congratulate ourselves. The successful football club is not the one that focuses on the trophy room. It's the one that focuses on the matches ahead. One only has to look at the agenda of any of your parliamentary sessions to appreciate the range and depth of the challenges we face. The head of the parliament's liberals made clear what he expected of the heads of government of France and the Netherlands. We left open the field to the constitution's detractors. And there's little sign yet that France will have a more serene or informed debate on its place in Europe in the run-up to next May's elections, or that the Netherlands, coming out of its elections last week, has really made up its mind.
but we need the Prime Ministers of those two countries <coughs> coming here to explain to us how they see the way forward. The absence of a pulling together project makes the task of the EU it's executive body, Treaty Guardian, Policy Formulator and Watchdog that much more difficult. The Commission's president was among the individuals spotlighted by newspaper European Voice as having most influenced the EU agenda. That was for a year in which he took a clear position on putting enlargement of the bloc on hold. This came as two more members were set to join. As Bulgaria and Romania's nominees to sit in the Commission went through the European Parliament's vetting sessions, they wondered how they might contribute. We are enthusiastic and how our enthusiasm uh, will, uh, will influence the political debate, how active we could be, uh, we'll see. The Parliament's role in enlargement procedures has taken on an increasingly serious tone. I'm calm, well prepared. At least I hope so, because it's not easy. It's a bit of a paradox. In the Constitution, we say we want to make the Commission smaller. But until we have the new rules, we can't avoid having more commissioners, one per country. After 50 years of communal building, the EU is now looking at a new phase full of uncertainty. But by next year, two-thirds of the member states will have ratified the constitution. The bloc's next presiding nation, Germany, says it will breathe new life into it. This Euro MP is among those saying it's time to shift from reflection into action. It's not easy. We can see debate on this coming back strongly. We have high hopes that Chancellor Merkel and the German presidency will find a solution to this crisis. That's her mandate in any case for the summit in June 2007, to find a consensus among the 27 member states and thereby set the treaty back on the rails. The symbolism offered by next year's 50th anniversary of the signing of the EU's founding Treaty of Rome could help encourage a relaunch of the Constitution. At the same time, the people of Europe will be keeping up the pressure on their leaders.